Finally, after a week of a bad weather and working on the pickup truck, we are finally back in the shop today and I couldn't be happier because today what we are going to do is we're going to be getting ready to glue this up and glue the sides on and insulate the walls and all of that fun stuff. But today's project is to get all of that ready. So I've got to cut some wood because obviously I still need a 10 feet, 10 foot pieces for the inside that go all the way back to 10 feet as well as for the outside as well. And that requires a couple of blocks to set up the outside of it properly. And I'm also going to try to get the insulation cut, which that should be interesting as well. But the first thing I'm going to do is I think because these are kind of wobbly here still, I'm going to go ahead and put a brace piece of wood from here, probably to about here, just with some scrap plywood and some screws. That way then when I'm moving it to wherever I'm gonna do the glue up at, I won't have to worry about that breaking off in the process. All right, so I feel a little bit better now that that has a little bit extra strength anyway. It's not quite as wobbly. I probably could do it a little bit better, but I think it'll be fine this way. Now, the next thing I got to do is make some spacer blocks. The reason why I need the spacer blocks is because as you remember from the last video or maybe the video before that, I cut off a portion for the floor down here. So if I go ahead and just put a piece of plywood on top of here for the outside, that piece of plywood goes on the outside of the floor of the trailer. So I have to have it set up so that that piece of plywood comes down far enough to cover the floor edge. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Alright, so the next thing I think I'm going to do is remove the canoe rack there from the back of my truck because, well, I can't be in there if I'm going to slide all of this stuff into there. Alright, honestly that went a little bit easier than I thought that it was going to be. The next thing is that I need to pull out some of the plywood from underneath there to mark which sides are going to be facing in to the trailer because they do have a good side and a bad side. So that means I'm going to have to kind of sort through those, figure out that, as well as figure out which one I'm going to cut up for the two foot extension. But that means that I need to move that and I think I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with the template and lean it up against there but I'm trying not to move this thing as much as I absolutely possibly can just because of the, uh, you know, seam there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and then I'm gonna start sorting through the plywood. <laughs> The back side of that, because there's no insulation areas, is actually very heavy compared to the rest of the trailer. 
as it turns out figuring out which plywood I was going to cut up into two foot sections for the ends of the trailer actually wasn't that hard why because I don't know if you guys remember but I have this one here that was going to be the original template and it's got all the markings on it and everything and I was smart when I did these markings I did it on the side with all of the knots on it so that means that we've got a nice side right over here that'll look nice in the galley so the next step is to measure that all out now I don't have to be two feet exactly on for the interior because the interior wall is thinner which means I'm gonna actually cut those about an inch bigger than what they actually need to be and then I'll have extra to cut the exterior skin a little bit bigger than it needs to be as well so that I can cut it off and trim it with the router. I really need to get Dunce hat because it seems like every video I definitely have a Dunce moment and this one costed me about a sheet of quarter inch plywood which that's about $35 right now so yeah basically what happened is in my head I said that the inside ones actually needed to be two and 10 inches so two foot 10 inches no it was supposed to be like one foot 10 inches and so yeah I cut those and I should have had what four foot four inches left on the quarter inch plywood but I didn't and therefore I ended up wasting a lot of plywood so what I ended up doing was having to recut the inner boards so that they would be just over the inside diameter or width because I wanted to have a little bit extra that I can just you know cut off of there and call it good once it's actually glued on to the skeleton so yeah I've got these two pieces of wood here that didn't need to be cut and now I've got a just under a half of a piece right there now that I honestly don't think that I need. But that's what happens when you have dunce moments and it costs you money. Now where does that leave me? Well, it leaves me with needing more plywood. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things that I really should have paid much, much closer attention to and re-measured and double measured. But for some reason I had two foot in my head because that extension is two feet and then I was thinking a little bit extra but it didn't need to be that because I didn't need the extra because two feet on the inside is already like two inches too much so I could have just cut those at two feet and called it good but it is what it is lesson learned I guess for the hundredth time <laughs> but there is some good news because I'm not doing the extra thick floor like I thought I was going to. I am able to return two pieces of the inch and a half insulation. So that got rid of those two. So at least I'm able to exchange those two for a piece or two of the three fourths inch insulation since that's what the new flooring is gonna be. Which it also means I was able to get all of the insulation up and off of the wood there so that I could see the wood a little bit easier and the insulation. So we're at the point now where I've got a semi truck moving across the street here, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut out that insulation to match that then it fits into the areas that it needs to fit into.
All right, so now that we've got the insulation done here, I've actually had to put a couple of boards on top of them because of the wind kept blowing them. But now that that's done, I need to go back under there and pull out yet another two pieces of quarter inch plywood for the inside of the wall. Now I didn't realize that I needed to do this, but what I need to do is I need to put the eight foot pieces up here and then I need to take and put that back on top of it. Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to make that curved edge and I'm gonna be able to take the sawzall and cut out that portion so that it's a little bit easier on the router when I go to route it out and make it all even so that you know you don't got a large chunk that you're actually removing you're only removing like a quarter of an inch to an inch of material so i'm gonna go ahead and get that all set up now i had it all lined up nicely on the table and stuff and i decided before i started cutting i'd show you what i did here so i matched up the bottom and the front of the trailer as well as the back to make sure that it was nice and flat then what I did is I came up here and I just took my finger here, put it up against the wood and I just traced it like that. So it's about even all the way down. It doesn't have to be perfect because, well, it's gonna get cut off anyway once it is glued onto one side of the plywood. Since it's set up now, I'm gonna go ahead and put some clamps on here and then I can take the scroll saw and go ahead and just cut it out right along that line all the way down. All right, so as you can see here, there's still a little bit left here so that I can take that flush cut bit once it's glued to the plywood and I can just run right around this portion right here. So if you remember when I actually cut the frame out, I said that there was a couple of spots that were a bit wavy. Well, I think that right now is gonna be the best time for me to go ahead and take care of that issue before I get any further. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the sander and just zip those down real quick. So just taking the belt sander down this for a minute just really made it a whole lot smoother and I'm much happier with the outcome of it right now. So I shouldn't have any issues dealing with it when I am constructing it. I just looked over the instructions in the book again, and it looks like I am ready to just get my tools together that will need to come with me. And guys, if you wanna know what resources I've been using during this build, I highly suggest going down and checking out the resources area in the description, because I have a link to the book here, as well as a Facebook group, which has been honestly just as helpful as the book has been, as well as a forum that has a tons of information on just about any kind of tiny teardrop that you might want to build. So I highly suggest going in and checking out that resources section if you're thinking about building one of these teardrops yourself. So I've got just about everything together that I'm going to need to be able to glue and make the walls complete. So the first thing obviously is my notebook with the book in it and all of my notes. Then we've got the glue. We've got all of the spacer blocks. We've got the router bits as well as the router. We've got rollers and brushes. I'm actually needing two more brushes that are two inch and plastic to put down so that we're not getting glue everywhere on his floor. Then of course we've got the insulation that goes into their respective places and the Dewalt drill and bits. So this should be just about everything that we need. Oh, I also put down a note here for me. We need two more sheets of ply for the outside. We need the template to bring with us just so then we have an idea of where we need to set weight and where we can't because you don't want to put a lot of weight on that door because then it's going to make the plywood want to you know dip up and also my tool apron that i always wear because it is so handy so like i said i do have a couple of things that i need to pick up yet but other than that as soon as i figure out where exactly i'm going to be gluing all this up i will be ready to do so in like 
a half an hour's time because it is going to take me a little bit to load all this into my truck and to make sure that everything is you know strapped down or not going to at least go anywhere hopefully you guys like this video remember to go and check out that resources section that i've added to the description and if you've liked this of course make sure to hit that subscribe button hit that bell so you're notified whenever i do put out a video and until next time as always you guys have a good one